These new weight loss drugs help people lose dramatic amounts of weight. They've exploded in popularity and even permeated pop culture. Have you heard of semaglutides? The United States has high rates of obesity. There's also significant societal pressure to be thin in this country. A lot of people want these brand name drugs, but can't get access to them. They require a prescription, they are very expensive, and they are frequently in shortage. But there is an alternative. Copies of drugs like Ozempic, Zepbound, and Wagovi, prescribed by telehealth companies and dispensed by compounding pharmacies. What is a compounding pharmacy? How is this legal? Are these copies safe? We'll break all that down for you and more in this stat deep dive. So you've probably heard of Ozempic. It's part of a class of drugs called glucagon-like peptide 1 receptor agonists, or GLP-1s. Ozempic has become synonymous with this whole class of new weight loss drugs, which includes Wagovi, Munjaro, Zepbon, Rebelsis, and others. While exact uses and formulas vary, they all contain one of two active ingredients, semaglutide or trizepatide. This is really the first time we've had medications that can cause significant weight loss. I mean, 15%, maybe even up to 20% weight loss. So that, that's really significant. And so that's driving a lot of demand. And why, well, what are some of the reasons that these, these drugs are hard to access? One aspect is their cost. I mean, these medications have really high list prices, um, over $1,000 per month. So that would be what you would be paying if you don't have insurance. Even if you do have insurance, a lot of insurers, a lot of plans don't cover these medications. Also, they've been in constant shortage. So there just literally is not enough of these medications to go around. These shortages created an opening for telehealth companies and compounding pharmacies. But what is a compounding pharmacy? First of all, these businesses have existed well before GLP-1s came to market. They are special pharmacies that make medicines rather than just sell them. They specialize in making versions of drugs for people with specific needs. For example, for people who have trouble swallowing pills, they can make drugs in liquid form. If someone needs an unusual dose of medicine that isn't commercially available, they can make it. They even make medicine for pets. Normally, the FDA restricts compounding pharmacies from making copies of approved drug products without some sort of reformulation. However, this rule is lifted when brand name medicines are in shortage. Ozempic, Wagovi, Zepbound, and Munjaro have all been in shortage. So for now, compounders can sell what the FDA calls essentially copies of these drugs. It's not the active pharmaceutical ingredient that is in shortage. It is the finished form drug. And so that leads me to believe that there's something in the production process of that finished form drug uh, that is holding up their ability to meet, uh, to meet the demand for it. Most of the brand name GLP-1 drugs come in auto injector pens, which need to be manufactured and filled. Compounders package their semaglutide and terzepatide products differently. Most are dispensed with commercially available vials and syringes. So this means compounding pharmacies don't have to worry about manufacturing any kind of device in order to meet demand. But are the products really essentially copies of the brand name drugs? So where are they sourcing uh, those ingredients from? Under FDA guidance, both drug manufacturers and compounding pharmacies and outsourcing facilities have to acquire the active pharmaceutical ingredient from FDA registered manufacturers. And so that's where compounding pharmacies acquire the API. It comes with a certificate of analysis that, it, that says this is what it says it is at this purity and this potency. Um, they often uh, provide third party testing that validates uh, that certificate of analysis. So if you are accessing your compounded drug via a legitimate state licensed pharmacy, you can have some confidence that the drug is what it says it is. So compounding companies are filling the shortages gap, but how do patients get compounded GLP-1 prescriptions in the first place? This is where those big telehealth companies come in. How easy is it for someone to just go instead to on, online and, and find someone to prescribe it to them? Um, well, it depends on what qualifies as easy. If, if you want to just find a site that specializes in prescribing compounded GLP-1s, your options are pretty much infinite at this point. There are just literally hundreds of sites that are selling these drugs now or prescribing these drugs. These online services vary greatly when it comes to how they evaluate patients. Some simply ask that you fill out a questionnaire. You know, you fill out a survey beforehand that gives all the details of your BMI, uh, your medical history, and then you 
the, the doctor or the provider reviews that information and you know the prerequisite here usually like the the baseline information going in is i would like a glp1 drug please so just the conversation starts there already and then they're like yeah you seem to qualify here you go and it's a pretty quick text-based interaction others do have synchronous or video-based consultations like this um but it's they're asking kind of the same information it's just a little bit more back and forth so to recap Telehealth companies and compounding pharmacies are able to address access to prescriptions and shortages. These versions are also considerably less expensive, which makes them more accessible. But there are some important things to keep in mind for patients that are considering compounded versions of GLP-1s. For instance, how are they regulated? So can we just kind of talk about the, the kind of regulatory framework around uh, a co compounding? Compounding pharmacies are, for the most part, are regulated by uh, state boards of pharmacy um, and the uh, inspection and compliance groups that are um, affiliated with with those those regulatory agencies. The FDA does have some ability to come in if there is some serious issues going on in, in a compounding pharmacy. It's important to note that compounded GLP-1 products, strictly speaking, are not FDA approved. And because they are only allowed as long as the brand name drugs are in short supply, compounders must cease production of these drugs as soon as they come off the FDA shortage list. So what does this mean for patients taking compounded GLP-1s, which are intended to be used indefinitely? Well, in October 2024, Eli Lilly's Terzepatite products, Munjaro and Zepbound, did come off the shortage list and compounders had to stop selling compounded Terzepatite. Jennifer Birch, owner of the Central Compounding Center in Durham, North Carolina, explained her experience during that time at a media roundtable organized by the Alliance for Pharmacy Compounding. And so what we've seen is uh, patients freaking out and doctors freaking out. And my phone's blowing up while I'm just sitting in here with a doctor saying, oh my God, help me. And I had one text me last night that said, you just got to keep making it. And I'm like, dude, no, that's not how this works. And so, you know, we, we have a huge uh, educational uh, gap that has to be filled with providers on when we can compound and when we can't compound and that type of thing. But just a few days later, the FDA announced that it was reconsidering its decision to remove the drugs from the list, and compounding pharmacies were able to resume dispensing to Zepatite. So what does the future look like for patients taking compounded GLP-1 drugs? At the time of recording this video, compounding pharmacies continue to fill prescriptions for both semaglutide and terzepatide despite both Novo Nordisk and Eli Lilly claiming that they can meet demand. Telehealth companies and compounding pharmacies, for their part, insist that the shortages remain widespread. In a court filing on November 21, 2024, a compounding trade association said they provide the FDA with evidence that the branded terzepatide shortage persists. The FDA said it is continuing to evaluate the shortage. And of course, there could soon be major shakeups at the FDA and other federal health agencies once the new Trump administration takes office next year. But ultimately, as long as there is such a huge demand for GLP-1s and they remain so expensive and hard to get, patients will continue to look for alternatives to the brand name products. STAT will continue to follow this story as it unfolds. For more coverage, visit statnews.com.